Hi guys, so I'm finally sitting down to make the first trimester video. I feel like in true Zoe style, it's gonna be quite long, quite chatty, quite rambly. So I'm telling you now, go and grab a drink, go and grab a snack. If you are new because you've stumbled on this video as you are in your first trimester or you have just found out you're pregnant or you have a fear of vomit and you have stumbled on this video, hi, welcome. I hope this helps you in some way. So a couple of things that I want to touch on in this video and I'm gonna try and work out if I can do those little like timestamps so that if there's something specific that you want to see more than another, then you can click that, is the first signs and symptoms of the pregnancy, the fear of vomit and just generally how I felt during the first trimester and things that I found really helpful. During my first trimester, I watched a lot of YouTube videos. I was in such a hole of kind of seeking comfort and reassurance from those that had already gone through the first trimester. And I know that it's a time in pregnancy that not a lot of people talk about and can often be one of the hardest trimesters, especially if you are someone who doesn't want to share the news that you're pregnant yet and you can feel quite isolated, quite lonely, or that you are really struggling with it. There's a lot that happens in the first trimester. And I absolutely loved watching videos about it before I got pregnant even. I'm one of those people that just loves watching pregnancy content regardless. And I think it's really refreshing to see the honesty and um, people's first-hand experiences of that time. And as somebody who has a fear of vomit, fear, phobia, emetophobia, for me the first trimester was always the biggest hurdle um, for me to get through. And I think that is largely down to the fact that I have a fear of being sick. Just as an FYI, um, if you are watching this and some of the words I'm using, vomit, sickness, things like that, um, are triggering, I don't know if this video is right for you. I don't know any other words to use, um, but just watch with caution. As a little like PSA before you get into this video, I do just want to say one thing that I probably Googled and searched for the most in my first trimester was positive first trimester experiences. Because of the anxiety around the sickness, or impending sickness, I didn't know if I was going to feel sick or not. I wanted to seek reassurance from other women who hadn't been sick. It's so easy once you start watching these videos, if you are not in the right mindset, to find one that doesn't help. And as much as everyone's experience is so different and there will be so many people who find certain different aspects of the first tri trimester slightly harder than others or some people will have them far worse than others. I can only really go by my experience and I think during points of my first trimester when that anxiety really took over, I just wanted to know about the women who weren't sick and that's what I wanted to see. I wanted the stories from people who felt sick, had their bad days, but weren't actually sick. I didn't think it would make me magically not be sick. It was just much better for my mind. If you are watching this and you have a metaphobia or a huge, huge fear of sickness or you are just coming into your first trimester and you're at that weird stage, where you feel like, and this is the only way I can describe it, as someone who hates roller coasters, obviously, you feel like you've been strapped into a roller coaster and it's about to go and you have no idea if there's gonna be 24 loop-the-loops, ups, downs, backwards, drops, you have no idea, but you're strapped in and you can't get out. That's how I felt and I don't know if anyone is watching this and you're like, this is exactly how I feel right now. I have not thrown up once through 
this pregnancy so far. So you are not about to watch a video where I am describing graphic sick scenes. I hope that you can get some positivity from this video and that it makes you feel reassured and gives you a slight sense of calm. But I just thought I would say that now in case anyone's clicked on this and they think, is this gonna make me feel worse? I'm hoping not, but I am still gonna be honest. Um, and I do still want this video to be a reflection of my experience. So I just wanted to say that first. Overall, looking back at my first trimester, I would actually say, I had a very positive first trimester experience and although it was hard and it had its moments and there were better days and worse days, I know that there will be millions and millions of people with such varying experiences of the first trimester and all I can do is sit here and tell you mine. And I do think it's so nice to be able to share that and for there to be, to be like a wealth of different videos from different people's experiences of pregnancy. So without further ado, let's get into the first little bit of this video, which is the first symptoms of pregnancy. This is coming from somebody who, because I can be quite an anxious person, I'm slightly too in tune with how I'm feeling and like the physicalities of my body. If something feels wrong, I'm the sort of person that's likely to overthink it. So I am always very in tune with my body and how I'm feeling and whether something's slightly different or a bit off. The one thing that I think was my biggest uh, symptom was bloating. Now I, I can be quite a bloaty person but I'm not necessarily that bloaty before I come on my period so I got to a point where I was actually struggling to do my jeans up and I was like this is different like I know it's around Christmas time and we all get a bit you know <laughs> happy with the Christmas snacks but the bloating was not my regular bloating and that was one of the first things that I was like hmm cramping so again another symptom that can be considered a pms symptom something that a lot of people will experience before they start their period and actually i do remember so many people in forums and uh places that you sort of read about like all oh, the two week wait and you're googling every symptom and you're like is this that or what does this mean so many people are like don't overthink the symptoms in those two weeks because so many of them are the same and I completely agree they really are something like cramping is so normal when you're about to come on your period however again I'm generally not a very crampy person but I've put on here from around five days after I ovulated the cramping was like uncomfortable and it was really noticeable and usually I just kind of get on with my day and don't think about it too much. It could have been that I was really overthinking it, but I do remember the cramping being one of the biggest signs that something different was going on. It was like a different kind of cramping. So another one of the symptoms that I had actually completely forgotten, so I'm glad I wrote it down, was that I was getting shooting pains from my armpits into my boobs, which isn't normal for me. My boobs were a lot more tender than usual from about seven days after I'd ovulated, like noticeably more tender. Randomly got a metal taste in my mouth when I was brushing my teeth. Just on one of the days, I was just brushing my teeth and I just had this really overwhelming metal taste in my mouth and I was like, that is weird. I was quite out of breath from about seven days after I'd ovulated and I was very like cold one minute then like really hot the next so it's like my body temperature was a bit all over the place but the main symptom that was so bizarre for me that made me go I must be pregnant like there is n there is really not much of an explanation as to why this has happened was that around nine, 10 days after I'd ovulated, 
I was getting nosebleeds and I'm not really a nosebleedy person. So that was very bizarre for me. I think when my nose started bleeding was when I was a bit like, this must be a symptom because why is my nose bleeding? Like, this is really, really random. Moving on to the fear of sickness. It's hard because I'm obviously not an expert. I can only speak from my own experience here. But I know quite a few people who um, have this same fear around vomiting and being sick. It's not nice. I don't really know many people that enjoy it or, or don't mind experiencing that. Um, but for me, it's been something that's been very, very overwhelmingly. It's just been something in my life that has been so dominating for like such a long time. It's one of the main factors um, buried into my anxiety and when my anxiety flares up, it's usually around something to do with it. I'm one of those people that knows exactly where to look on a pavement when I'm walking along. It's it's like my eyes look for it. And I know if you're watching this, you'll know exactly what I mean. It's something that no matter how much you tell yourself, it's fine, you know, you're not gonna die. Nothing awful is gonna happen. It's just one of those fears that really gets in there. Since the age of like 15, 16, when I thought about having children, I was like, how will I do how will I do the first trimester? I feel like so many people when they find out they're pregnant just think like, oh my god, this has gotta come out. What's the birth gonna be like? I'm really terrified about the birth. For me, it was the kind of very quickly impending first trimester that was my biggest worry and fear and especially when you start looking at statistics and you know the amount of women that actually have morning sickness in their first trimester it's a very high percentage and don't get me wrong i know lots of lots of women who haven't been sick and it is worth pointing out that morning sickness is a term that is penned generally to sickness and nausea so i don't know whether that very high percentage of women are being put into a morning sickness category because they've experienced nausea or whether that is actual being sick but i found it reassuring just to think of morning sickness as anything ranging from nausea to hyperemesis which actually is far beyond morning sickness there was a lot of things that i i researched into or looked into that always made me feel worse and then better researching hg i mean i didn't need to do that i was just causing myself more stress but actually the percentage of women who experience that is so 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 small and don't get me wrong it does happen and you know you can never guarantee that it's not going to happen to you but it's a much, much smaller percentage and I was really holding on to that. <laughs> in those first couple of weeks, my anxiety was like the worst it's been in years. I couldn't sleep, I was barely eating, um, I just found everything impossible. All I could think about was, am I gonna get sick? Is this gonna make me sick? Am I about to go through 10, 12 weeks of sickness or am I gonna be one of these um, really unlucky people who sick through the whole pregnancy you just don't know and you're so excited and you're so like you know I've wanted this like my whole life I've always been someone who is so maternal and I've just been so so excited for this chapter of my life but also that's so paired with this is gonna be the biggest challenge <laughs> that I've ever had to do with the thing that I'm the most excited to do and it was such like a strange ball of emotion and through those couple of weeks where I found it really hard because I just kind of felt like I was waiting I felt like every day I would wake up and be like okay how do I feel today do I feel sick am I gonna feel sick later I just felt like every day and every minute that passed I was getting closer to 
knowing how my body was going to kind of react to the new hormones and the pregnancy. And I think that's what made my anxiety slightly worse. And the one thing that I will say now is don't go on forums, don't Google. If you are one of those people now that is feeling like that and you know, you're kind of waiting and you're reading other people's pregnancy experiences. So I was on a forum just in an app and every day I would wake up and I would get my little update, which was super encouraging and reassuring. I would always find myself navigating like towards the forums, which is where people would obviously discuss how they were feeling. And I would just scroll through tens and tens of hundreds of women waking up being like, oh, I threw up this morning. And I was like, oh my God, I need to, I need to get off this. So I had to stop reading what was happening to everybody else day by day um, and start looking for much more positive stories and reading blog posts by women who were like, yeah, I felt sick, but I did this, this and this. And, you know, I didn't feel sick the whole day. And, and that would, although I didn't know if that was going to be me or not, I found that very reassuring in terms of the anxiety. My anxiety would subside and I would think, okay, that could be me. You just don't know. I know also that the fear of is this going to happen to me is so real and so huge but I just felt like the want to have a baby for me was far stronger so I just thought I could put this off and put this off but I don't want that fear to ever prevent me from being able to start my own family and although I was really nervous and really worried I knew and focused so much on the end goal and you know the bigger picture I just thought I just if it happens there's nothing I can do about it but at the end of it I'll have a baby and I found thinking that way really helped me and also knowing how much your body is doing in the first trimester I found really reassuring so I would always want to know you know each week like what's developed and what's grown and that really helped me because I felt like there was a reason for me to feel this way. Now moving on to how I actually felt. Anxiety and thoughts and worries aside Physically, I did feel sick. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I didn't throw up though. And that for me was, I don't, I don't know what I did to deserve that. You know, I don't know what, I, I'm just so thankful. And that does not mean that if I'm lucky enough to have another pregnancy that the same thing is gonna happen that way. I don't know, but I was not actually sick. It's not how I imagined it. In my experience, the nausea was not the same as when you have an illness or you've got a virus. It was like being travel sick um, or hung over, or it was like a weird kind of underlying, you don't feel great. I pretty much retched and gagged my way through most days in the first trimester and sometimes it was over nothing, sometimes it was from me bending down. Once I realised that me gagging didn't automatically mean I was going to throw up because sometimes I would gag but I wasn't feeling sick, um, it was a really weird feeling. <laughs> I don't really know how to explain it. I suppose it is just like you feel rough. You feel really rough um, and anything can set you off, but that didn't necessarily mean I was had my head in the toilet. I have to say that the fact that we were in a national lockdown probably meant that I avoided feeling worse or actually throwing up a few times. You know, I didn't have to be anywhere. I didn't have commitments. I wasn't commuting or going to and from anywhere. The fact that we weren't allowed to leave the house meant that I was in a very fortunate position where I could just lie in bed if I felt awful or um, give myself the space 
from people or smells or situations that otherwise I think would be would have been much harder to avoid and I do wonder what my first trimester will be like not in a lockdown if I was to ever get pregnant again. I do think that's worth pointing out because obviously my situation in the first trimester is not your average situation <laughs> at all. We were literally told to stay home. I was comforted by the fact that I honestly, apart from I would say two or three times where I felt, am I gonna have to go to the bathroom? But I never actually did. In the grand scheme of things, that's not that many times. You know, I can't sit here and say in all confidence, if you are watching this with the same fear of mine, that that's how your pregnancy is gonna go and that's how your first trimester is gonna go. But if I had somebody to watch who was saying this to me, it would have at least made me feel like there is another, there is an alternative way of getting through the first trimester that isn't just having your head in a toilet for the whole time which was obviously all I was imagining <laughs> I hope that's helpful equally I don't know if it is or isn't because I never threw up so I don't have that like epiphany moment of guys I've had this fear all my life I threw up and now I'm cured or now I don't feel like this because I'm sure there will be moments and things going forward. You know, I'm already thinking, am I gonna throw up at the birth? Quite a lot of women do. Depends what medication there is, depends how I'm feeling, depends what the pain's like. There's always things I'm thinking about. And in life, it's something that can't really be avoided. And it's not usually something you have any control over, which is why I think a lot of people have a fear of it. It feels like it's never ending, but it is and every minute that goes past is another minute that it is ticking away and that your body is doing some crazy miracle work and you are growing a human being and you just have to remind yourself of that. Generally, my nausea was actually slightly better in the morning and would progressively get worse throughout the day and was always its peak kind of worse at from four o'clock onwards. And it was the same pretty much up until week 15. Week 15 was when I felt it shift. And there was definitely a change in um, how long I would feel nauseous for. So at the beginning, it would start about midday and just get progressively worse until the end of the day. Then it would get to like two, then three, and then it's kind of stuck around four for quite a few weeks. So I knew when it got to 4 p.m. that I would have to be prepared with my Sprite, with my chewing gum, with my Werther's Originals. I'd have to make sure I was snacking a lot, um, but I will get on to things that I found really, really helpful. I definitely think on a much larger scale and after watching quite a few videos of people talking about emetophobia and pregnancy, that there are other options for you. If you are somebody who has extreme anxiety or emetophobia around feeling sick or nauseous, you can speak to your doctor, you can speak to your midwife and see what they can do to help you, whether that is therapy, speaking to somebody, medication, there's always options and I don't want anybody to be watching this who has like such extreme fear that you are literally almost unable to function. You have to speak to your doctor, you have to speak to your midwife. And I do think that it's important to build support around you in those early stages. I know a lot of people don't like to share the news that they're expecting within the first 12 weeks. I personally wanted to tell um, a very select few people because had anything happened with the pregnancy, I would have also wanted that support from somebody. So. I did share and I do think if you're really struggling it's good to share with someone you trust, someone that would be your support whether things didn't go to plan or did. Moving on to actual symptoms and all the symptoms. <laughs> so in my notes on my phone <laughs> I started from four weeks up until 14 weeks. At four weeks I was 
very tired. In fact, weeks four to, I would say weeks four to seven, I was going to bed at like four, five and having a sleep and then waking up at about nine, 10. I also had really bad insomnia through those weeks as well. And I actually do think that that was mostly down to the anxiety. I would just lie awake at night and watch films, like literally back to back films. I'd finish one film, I'd start another one until about 3 a.m. And then I would fall asleep, but I had that thing where I would then wake up at four, wake up at five, wake up at six, wake up at seven, and then it's the next day. Um, and that made time <laughs> really drag. Fiery nips. I apparently have fiery nips in week four. Still had cramping um, in weeks four and five. In the very early weeks, the cramping was still quite bad, which also made me quite anxious because I just kept thinking like, is something wrong? Is, it, is Am I supposed to be cramping this hard? Like, it was actually quite eye-opening how crampy I was. I just was not expecting that. Like painful at times. Okay, so week four straight away couldn't do Nala's food. Nala has like fresh dog food. Um, so that was something I instantly was like, Alf, you gotta take over the dog, the dog food already, sorry. <laughs> so all I wanted to eat in these first couple of weeks was broccoli, mashed potato, strawberries, and ready salted crisps. I wanted everything salty at the beginning and broccoli, like it was all I wanted to eat. I could have just had a plate of broccoli and been so happy, which was weird. And also very short lived because after that I didn't want to eat broccoli at all. I started getting spotty around my hairline and along my jaw, which is not places I usually get spotty. I put anxious, but really excited. I think this was the first week that I told um, my kind of close knit bubble um, of people and that felt great and it also made it feel so much more real as well. Nosebleeds at night so I carried on having nosebleeds. From week five I was getting very out of breath. So as I was kind of moody, irritable, anxious and weepy this week I think this was probably a bit of a tough week because in my head I was like from week six that's when everyone else gets sick like next week it's gonna happen to me so I think week five was a tough one in terms of anxiety. Very cold hands and feet I, at night, I would get so hot and sweaty, like it was January and Alfie and I had the, all the bedroom windows open and I had a fan on me, yet my hands and feet would always be freezing cold, but the rest of me was just like sweating. I noticed that my leg hairs and my armpit hairs were growing really fast this week, apparently. Um, more nosebleeds, sleep very broken. Are you okay? <laughs> okay, then moving on to six weeks. Boobs didn't really hurt that much. I've put feel sick when I'm hungry and then sick if I eat too much. So trying to find the right balance was really tricky. And I do think this is one thing that is so important. Even when you are feeling nauseous, it's so important to try and eat something, even if it's something really tiny and flavorless. But there were weeks where I felt sick if I hadn't eaten, I felt sick while I was eating it and then I just felt sick afterwards. And that was really frustrating. And also I just didn't know what I wanted to eat. Like my appetite just had gone, I think by this week. More spotty, I put drinking all the Sprite. I think week six is where my nausea like really ramped up. I started really worrying about appointments. I put Alfie making me most meals. Still don't know what I want to eat though. <laughs> and I've also put, hate the smell of Nala's breath. Um, I went through a couple of weeks where the smell of Nala would make me cry, actually like cry. Like I, I could not, and I love her so much. Maybe it was partly guilt. I love her so much, but I just couldn't have her too close to me because she just made me feel so nauseous. Week seven, I feel like was probably one of the toughest. Everything just made me feel sick. I, all I wanted to eat was strawberries. Anxiety still really bad. Hello spots, more spots. I've put give me all the Sprite in capital letters. Coffee smells disgusting. So week seven 
was the week I started getting what was probably one of my most bizarre pregnancy symptoms that really clung on and was one of the biggest symptoms I had alongside nausea was um, something called dysgeusia, which I only found out when someone told me this, but it's when you have a taste in your mouth constantly. Um, so that could either be a sour taste or a metallic taste. So for me, it wasn't a metallic taste. It was just a sour, disgusting taste in my mouth. And it didn't matter what I ate, how many times I brushed my teeth, I just had this taste in my mouth. So that started in week seven and that didn't go until I would say week 16, sometimes a bit in week 17. Sometimes I'll still get it now depending on what I eat. If I have something quite acidic, I will, I will get that taste in my mouth still. Um, so that has, I wouldn't even say that's fully gone yet. <laughs> Every now and then it creeps back. I found brushing my teeth really hard this week uh, because my teeth went super, super sensitive um, to the point where I would brush them and get sharp pains up through all my teeth. And I would be like, oh my God. So I had to change my toothbrush, change my toothpaste and use like lukewarm water to brush my teeth. And I had to do it really, really gently. Oh, got a cold sore in week seven as well. <laughs> I was quite specific on here. Week eight, I've actually put in, in brackets, a better week, constipated, gassy, nauseous, anxious. Spots cleared up a bit at the start of the week and then they came back. Less of an appetite, this is a better week as well. Feeling less brain foggy and a bit more myself. And I think what I mean here is that I felt like I've reached week eight, I've not thrown up, and my anxiety started to lessen slightly because I just thought maybe I won't. And I think that's why we had our first scan in week eight, which was an early reassurance scan. And that also helped because to be able to see um, what's going on kind of eliminates that extra layer of like nervousness and worry that you have like is everything okay is everything growing okay like is everything looking okay oh this was the week that i only wanted porridge and biscoff spread in the mornings <laughs> that went on for a, a while <laughs> and the retching also when did the retching start i feel like the retching started in week seven and i've put on here still retching at smells or if I exert too much energy. This was the weird thing about my gag reflex. And I Googled to, to try and discover whether, it, basically your body re, um, releases a lot more progesterone when you're pregnant. And progesterone can relax parts of your body. And I was like, has this progesterone relaxed my gag reflex? Because I could drop something on the floor, lean over to pick it up and retch. And I'm like, I don't feel sick right now. Why, why have I retched at that? My dressing room made me retch. Even talking about it is making me want to. My dressing room made me retch. Like I had to psych myself up to go and get dressed in the mornings. Like it was so weird. Sometimes I would think about opening the fridge. So I'd be upstairs and I would think about opening it and it would make me retch before I even got down here to actually open it. Um, so there was a few times where it was like, you know, if I like ran up the stairs too quick, I would gag. Um, and that was very peculiar. And that actually lasted until I would say like week 13. <laughs> so I put week nine was my best week. I mean, at the time that was my best week. Feeling normal when eating, so Felt rough before, felt great when I was eating, felt rough afterwards. Still retching, eating a lot more. Week nine was the week that all I wanted was sugary things. So I went from like salty to sugary. Sweet chili dip was something I was very into that week. Um, I found myself doing more around the house. Oh, this, <laughs> this was the week I had the worst trapped wind I think I've ever had in my life. <laughs> It was so painful. I was squirming around on the bed and Alfie actually said to me, do I need to take you to A&E? Like, he didn't know what to do. 
Um, he was like rubbing my back, like, patting my back. And in the end, I think I just scrunched up in a ball and went and had a bath and like, I did everything. Um, and it went in the end. We can imagine how that was resolved. <laughs> Pain in boobs, very stuffy nose. Uh, snotty like I have a cold so like your sinuses and your congestion all gets a bit blocked still avoiding the kitchen or opening the fridge <laughs> I feel like week 10 was tricky and actually when I looked up the kind of surges in your hormones and things week 10 is when you saw week 9 and 10 is when you reach like your highest level of HGC um, and then it does start to come back down after that so I felt pretty rough in week 10 um and that's when i had a like full-on sobbing i felt really sick one night and i was just sobbing and laughing at the same time and alfie was like i are you okay and i was like i don't know but i was sobbing so hard i was making myself laugh and alfie was laughing but also he was concerned and then because i was crying so hard i was gagging and retching which just made it so much worse and it was one of those moments that i will always remember because it was kind of comical but also just a kind of moment of madness i had a lot of what I could feel was like stretching going on in week 10 um, around my uterus. Put just one McDonald's all the time. All I'm eating is Werther's Originals. Um, itchy boobs and nipples. Headaches. I predicted that I would get a lot of headaches because I'm a headachey kind of person, especially when it comes to like hormones and things. Like I mostly know I'm about to come on a period if I get a really bad headache, for example. But actually that is one thing that I haven't had as much as I thought I would um, during pregnancy. So that was the first week I started getting a few headaches. There was nothing too bad. I just used my cool and soothe strips or a wet flannel and went to bed early. And then usually by the time I woke up in the morning, it was gone. Napped a bit more this week. But finding this week really hard just feels so nauseous and exhausted. Week 11, we found out we were having a little girl. So I just feel like that was the best start to the week. I was still gagging. I still felt sick, but I was like, I don't care. I just feel so excited. We're having a girl. It just feels so real. I had itchy boobs. I, th I put that I was quite emotional this week. Terrible sleep. <laughs> My anxiety was worse this week. This was a bad nausea week, week 11. I've put anxiety so much worse because my nausea was worse this week. I've put tomatoes just taste so bad even though I really want to eat them. <laughs> and I had really itchy boobs and itchy sides. Week 12, I've put in capitals one week until the second trimester. Sore boobs and all my bras were already too small so I made a little bra order in week 12. I was very spotty this week. I put feeling actually quite normal day five and six of week 12, which is, I mean, was probably the first couple of days I was feeling more myself. Week 13 announced online. Um, best week so far in terms of energy, getting dressed, moving around the house, doing more things. Felt more tired in the evenings. Still having nausea past 4 p.m. Still have dysgeusia, but it's not as strong. And then week 14, still tired. Nausea came back a bit stronger this week. Oh, I remember that because I felt like week 13, I bossed it. And then week 14 came and I was like, oh. <laughs> that lured me into a false sense of security. Weeing a lot more in week 14, I've put. And lots of like stretchy kind of pain. Um, when I say pain, I just mean like discomfort, like stretchy feeling of like your uterus is obviously stretching. And that's where I ended because obviously that is the first trimester essentially. I did trickle into like week 14 there, but I feel like one thing I didn't really touch on was like cravings and things I really wanted to eat. I went through phases. So as I said at the beginning, I wanted broccoli. I think the thing that has stood out most to me through the whole first trimester is fruit, fresh cold fruit, strawberries, banana, yogurt. Actually, I hated yogurt for a while. Anything very dairy. I didn't want yogurt, I didn't want milk. I went off cereal. My beloved Wagamama Katsu curry. I didn't want to go anywhere near it. In the first couple of weeks, chocolate cake was like, was enough to make me actually retch. An actual like, chocolate bars like a bar of chocolate if someone had said to me like oh i've bought you a bar of dairy milk i would have been like 
oh my god get it away from me like the smell of it which is also not like me at all because i love my chocolate so that was weird <laughs> i'm just trying to think what else i really loved and what else i really didn't love i didn't love toast so many people were like dry toast the smell of toast is like actually really strong <laughs> and i had a couple of weeks where just nah, the smell of toast was too much and i didn't like it breadsticks i loved dry cereal i loved i just kept those near the bed dairy dunkers Honestly, I've eaten so many Dairyly Dunkers, like it would shock you how many tubs of those I've eaten. <laughs> I, at one point I loved like a baguette with salt and vinegar crisps and Dairyly spread. And then I really got into sausage baguettes with brown sauce, McDonald's chips with chili, sweet chili dip. I just wanted that all the time. Melted cheese. Um, nothing new there. I already love melted cheese a lot, but like the dippers from McDonald's, oh, they were great. I wouldn't say there's anything particularly strange though. Nothing really bizarre. I, I honestly think the most bizarre thing is the fact that I couldn't eat a katsu curry or chocolate for a while because that is just so not me at all. Yeah, I think just in general, my appetite was just a bit all over the place. Like, I really had to think hard about what I wanted to eat in the evenings. Dinner was the hardest because I felt the most nauseous. Like I ate quite a lot of um, like instant noodles and I never really ate much, like quite plain pastas. Veg, I ate a lot of mash, mash and beans, mash with veg and gravy, just mash with anything. <laughs> so moving on to things that I found very helpful. Sprite, <laughs> probably should have gone on to a sugar-free Sprite slightly quicker than I did. That probably didn't help with teeth sensitivity, I can tell you that. Sprite was the only thing that I found when I had that instant wave of nausea. If I grabbed a cold Sprite and had a sip of that, it was like instant edge taken off. And also chewing gum. I have so many of these in the cars, in my handbags, next to my bed, multiple different flavors because sometimes one flavor would actually not help and then another one would. <laughs> um, so chewing gum and Sprite, I would say were the top two things. So anything minty, like a peppermint tea, mint imperials, mint basically, and Sprite. When I first found out I was pregnant, I did like a little order of, um, anything that anyone had said in a video that had helped them with the nausea and so i felt like i was stocked and fully prepared but actually very quickly ginger wasn't something i wanted wasn't something that really helped at all in fact on one of my the days where i felt the most sick i'd been drinking ginger ale so it didn't help at all and i had watched lily pebbles video on her first trimester and she said that her sister had told her Werther's Originals were really good just for something to like suck on. So I'd bought some Werther's Originals, but I did think in my mind, I was like, oh, if I'm feeling sick, am I gonna want something that tastes so like sugary? But actually, Werther's Originals, I have so many bags of these. I have these in all my handbags. I have them everywhere. Were my lifeline with the sour taste in my mouth. They were the only thing that cut through it. And if I felt nauseous, I would sit for my Sprite, have one of these, and I would feel so much better. I was just constantly sucking on Werther's Originals at one point. Another thing that I did was ordered myself this. I wore this most days and I do feel like it took the edge off on some of my worst days. Certainly not a first trimester essential. I just went overboard because of my fear and I just thought, I mean, if I'm gonna spend money on anything, it's gonna be something that might help with the nausea. So this is called the Emmy Turn bracelet. And I ordered this on Amazon. I was literally just, I think it was one of those things where I was putting all these like, pregnancy related things in my basket and it was like this came up i know that a lot of women wear the kind of like acupressure bands those don't work for me i get uh, motion sickness um and i grew up like trying those and they never really worked for me so i was like 
I just don't think they're gonna work. So I went in for something a little bit more hardcore. This you charge up and it actually has like, oh, it's a bit dirty. It has um, these two uh, metal plates and you pop this on one of your wrists. This is safe for pregnancy, by the way. And you can use it for travel too. So if you're watching this and you're not pregnant, but you get travel sickness, give it a go. Sort of two fingers down from the top, from the bottom of your hand. And you turn it on and it's kind of like a TENS machine. It sends like an electrical um, current. You can pick the strength. It can go very strong. I never put mine up to the maximum strength because I actually found it quite uncomfortable. The highest I think I ever went was three. And there's actually one, two, three, four, there's five. Most of the time I left on two or one and the battery life is amazing. Once you've charged this, it can go like three days without needing another charge, which is great because I used to fear it running out and being like, how am I gonna charge this? I need to wear it. So I basically wore this like through my whole first trimester. I'm gonna wear this now on any like road trips or anything because I really, really liked it. As I said, toothbrush and toothpaste change straight away. This is a Colgate sensitive teeth toothbrush. This is, these bristles are really, really soft. And then I went on to a Sensodyne toothpaste, which helped me massively. Hard boiled sweets. I ordered the biggest bag of Jolly Ranchers from Amazon and I loved these. I loved that they were sour. I loved like the flavors of them. Oh, I could have just eaten so many of these. I think for the last part of this video, I'm gonna see if Alf wants to come in and like chat you through the first trimester from his point of view, or if there's anything that I've like forgotten. <laughs> so I've talked obviously about my experience. Oh, she just kicked, she did a big kick. Was there anything that you weren't expecting about the first trimester that like surprised you or you were like, whoa, I just didn't know that? The only thing is probably just how much it takes you out. Mm -hmm. Like if you've got a dog or a cat or a pet or maybe even another child and you are the partner of the pregnant woman, yo, you've got the sole responsibility. <laughs> it's on you for now. Like those first three, four months or whatever, and it probably is more like four months than three months, you are just solo. You're riding solo. Uh, and I, I don't think I realised how much that would happen. Yeah, you were like, you did... It went from like me doing Nala's breakfast and like being up every morning, you jumping out of bed. Like, me, yeah. I, I am generally someone in the morning who has so much energy. I would make us like breakfast mm -hmm. and I went from that. You would take Nala out every morning, or you do now again. Almost but. instantly to just, I, I can't, I can't do that anymore. But not even that, like you'd wake up, and again, this isn't a bad thing. <laughs> you'd wake up and then be like, I need my breakfast now. Yeah. Like right now, I need to eat now. Yeah. So I'd be like, I'm used to waking up probably half an hour, an hour after you. Hitting the snooze. Hitting the snooze a couple of times. I take like five minutes to get ready. So I'm like, oh, I've got a meeting at nine o'clock. I'll wake up a quarter to nine. Do you know what I mean? Whereas now I'm like, okay, just instantly overnight and consistently for a long period of time. I'm doing Nala. Like my breakfast, breakfast, taking her out, breakfast. your breakfast, my, I had way better breakfast. Like yeah, I had like proper were, time yeah. to eat every day. <laughs> That's true actually, that was a positive thing. Like cleaning or cooking in the house. And often you want to eat very different meals to me. So it's like breakfast, lunch and dinner, different for you than, than to me as well. I know what you struggled with was the instantness of needing something. Yeah. Like, yeah, we definitely spoke about that a few times. <laughs> spoke about, argued, bickered. It, I, but that's how instant it was for me. Like, no, because we'd be sitting on the sofa, and then you'd be like, I want my lunch now. I need to eat right now. I don't, what do you mean? You're like, I'm literally just right half for an email, and you'd be like, no, I need to eat now. <laughs> I'm like, Zoe, can you not just give me half an hour notice? You're like, no. I don't get that notice, so neither no. do you. <laughs> no, I started getting better at knowing when I would need to. At first, I wasn't sure like when I was gonna feel most nauseous. No, and then I'd make you a lunch, and then you'd literally have like two mouthfuls, and I'm like, oh my god, I literally <laughs> just rushed and did that so instantly, and you've eaten two mouthfuls, and then you're like, I'm gonna eat the rest later. And I'm like, oh my god. But you can't be like, it just is what it, it is. Just isn't is it just is what it is. Well, it was frustrating for me as well, because I would feel so hungry and need mm. to eat right now, and then I would put it in my mouth and be like, 
that's not no. the one. Alfie was amazing. Like I have to say, we stock up on things. That Alfie you, like, would go ate to the shop regularly. and buy like punnets and punnets. Of I did two days ago at like eleven thirty at night. Zoe's like, I need a Kit Kat. I need Kit Kat chunky. <laughs> So I went and bought five two days ago. Five Kit Kat chunkies, the big like combo ones. Guess how many I've got left. And then this morning so he's like, I'm so sad, I've only got <laughs> one left. Two. I was like I've got two. I was left. like, could you meet in them all? No, Alfie was amazing. He was very supportive, very understanding. I think it helps that due to lockdown, still being fairly strict where we are, we're both at home a lot. If I was yeah. out working uh, so I I, say that. I worked in a shop yeah. or in a restaurant or in an office or something, it would have been a lot more challenging. We're yeah. very fortunate that we both work for ourselves and... We were in a lockdown. We're so. in a lockdown that actually kind of was a little bit of a positive in the respect of both being Around. together yeah. at the same time, the same place, very regularly. I also think Alfie was great at like pulling me out of like funks. You're good at this anyway because... Me and Alfie both have such different brains, which is why I think we work so well together. Super like, different brains. Alfie just thinks so differently to me. Like he's such a fixer. He's so practical. I'm the most Virgo Virgo you will there's ever, meet. ever been. And I obviously have such like an anxiety like brain. Like it just goes and goes and goes. And sometimes that can just spiral. And I feel like any time that happened, I think normally if I wasn't pregnant, you would have been much more like firm and much more like, nah, like you got this, like, come on. But you were so like considered and careful, but you didn't want, like you knew I was obviously, what I was feeling was real. It's not mm. like it wasn't happening, but you were also very good at being like, okay, well let's, you know, let's wait half an hour and see how you feel then. Or why don't you just try? And I basically went through a couple of weeks where I didn't even leave the bed. I was mm. so bad. That was mostly yeah. my anxiety. We'd have like really important business meetings. And so we'd be like, so where do you want to do the meeting? So we'd be on in Zoom or business. So I'd be like, yeah, we're both going to sit in bed and do it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and we literally join the call with like a lawyer's finance team. And it's literally and we like, both just sat in bed. <laughs> I'm literally sucking on, on a Werther's original drinking Sprite. And like, at that point they didn't even know. Nobody. Like nobody even knew. And we literally just sat in our bed. Like, yeah. You were really good at encouraging me, but not forcing me. And I think that's what I needed. I needed like that encouragement and like, like switching up your environment, like you'd be in bed and I'd be like, let's just bring let's the duvet down downstairs. to the sofa. Yeah. Oh, let's just switch up the environment. Just let's try go it. in the, here in the conservatory, we've got like quite a lot of glass. I'd be like, let's just lay on the sofa here for a bit. Also with the gagging, I would have moments of like, I can't, I can't Alfie, I'll gag. And you're like, that's okay. You gagged eight times yesterday and you weren't sick. Like yeah. it doesn't mean you're going to be sick. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And then mm. I would do it gag in fact <laughs> we'd both laugh Alfie would just <laughs> laugh, we'd both laugh I'd be in the kitchen cooking myself dinner at like 10 oh, p.m after cooking salmon. you salmon and then Zoe would just be like please <laughs> why us. and I'm like what is she like cooking salmon and I'm like oh my god I can't even make myself dinner no I would text you and be like can you open, open all the, the doors door. and windows because it oh, I'd absolutely just hear, I'd just hear you going stinks. Nala get off me please Nala, you stink. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, no. Like, I feel like you definitely fell into that trap of like waiting oh, for the second yeah, trimester. You just be like, oh my God, is it midnight yet? I'm for the second trimester and then I'm going to feel good. Like, that's, <laughs> that's not quite how it works. I feel like there's like a misperception, like, a misconception. Yeah, misconception there of like, the, the, minute, second, the hit, minute it hit yeah. the second trimester, everything is good. Which might happen for some people, but... 100%. It didn't happen for me. Yeah. I was week 15, wasn't I? Yeah. Generally. Still little things hanging on, but week 15 was like a turning point where mm. it was like I was getting up early again, doing Nala, like... Yeah, I remember the first time you were like, brought up breakfast for me. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> okay. Here we go. I think another thing is that like... It, just because you were doing things for me doesn't mean that I was like enjoying it. Like I found it so frustrating. I couldn't do things for myself, didn't I? Mm. And you were just like, it's fine. I think a bit of reassurance there was great because I just, A, I just felt guilty that I was like, hey, can you cook my dinner again, please? <laughs> and also the frustration that like, 
you can't like you just feel like you can't do it yourself i don't know it's like someone's jumped into your body and it's not you i feel like my personality was like zapped anybody that felt how you feel for three months is just going to be slightly more like diluted version of themselves yeah you know and I think I mean? that's what happened. But yeah, mood swings. Because at some point you were like, I don't know if this is ever going to, like, I don't know if I'm going to go back to normal. I, I don't know if this is going to stop. Like, I felt like this for so long now. This is, this is my new This normal. is how I feel. And I, do you remember I said to you, mm. when I had a moment of not feeling sick and I was like, whoa, oh my God. I'd gotten so used to feeling nauseous. I forgot what it felt yeah. like to not feel nauseous. And then when I didn't, I was like, Huh? Two months ago, I wouldn't have been able to sit here and film this video no without way. stopping it like three times to gag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything else more specific. Well, you're going to do a video anyway, aren't you? So we don't want to take all your. I've got a load of a load of talking points that are probably very different to yours. Oh no. <laughs> well, yours <laughs> are going to be much mean? more like first-hand experiences. Mine are much more as a partner experiences. Second-hand experience. Overall, we work very well as a team. Oh, unbelievably. Unbelievably. I was just gonna get up and head off. Oh. I feel like we've been recording for half an hour. I just think overall we worked very well as a team and I had many moments of really appreciating you. So thank you. Thank you for going to baby. You're welcome. Okay, well, I'm gonna- Do you wanna know two of the points that I'm gonna mention in my video? Yeah. But I'm not gonna go into them now. Yeah just how it's exactly like the movies and films and sexy trying for a baby is and and how great the sex life is once your girlfriend's pregnant <laughs> i didn't even bring that up in this video because what, I think my point sex in the be first quite... trimester are you joking <laughs> absolutely effing not or in the second <laughs> I think, I think... I'm cutting that out! Why? Gorgeous! My nan's gonna watch this! As always, I love and appreciate all your very thoughtful, lovely comments. And if there is any words of wisdom for those of you who have emetophobia or a fear of vomit and have experienced the first trimester, maybe it was slightly different to my experience, um, and you have anything encouraging to, sh to say or to share, um, then please, please feel free to do that in the comments and to help anyone who may have stumbled on this video or who has the same feelings and could very well be struggling as they're watching this right this second, what would you say to that person? Because I found words to be the most powerful and helpful thing um, and I just know that obviously I can only speak from my experience but it would be super super helpful for any of you who are willing to share your experience with that um, as well for those who want to read the comments so please please feel free to do that thank you so much for watching if you have got through this entire video Thank you so much. <laughs> um, and I will see you again very, very soon. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And yeah, I'll catch you in a bit.